my job is to introduce our speakers today, and it's not every day that you uh, you meet people that really inspire. This is, this is really one of those days. It's my honour to introduce three very special people. Over here is Geraldine Cox. Now, Geraldine began her career in 1975 with the Department of Foreign Affairs in Phnom Penh. Now, those of you like me who can remember that time will remember that the Vietnam War had spilled over into Cambodia, so it was hardly a uh, luxury posting at the time. Now, since then, Geraldine has had postings around the world before returning to Cambodia in 93, and that led to a series of events that had her co-founding what is now called the Sunrise Children's Villages. Geraldine has been featured in numerous news programs and documentaries, and the documentary about her experiences, My Khmer Heart, won the Documentary of the Year at the 2000 Hollywood Film Festival. Plans are in place for a film of the same name, My Khmer Heart, and perhaps in the Q&A we can ask Geraldine who's going to be the leading lady, who will play the leading lady. Geraldine's commendations are numerous. Just to give you a feel, in 1999, King Norodom Sihanouk, by royal decree, bestowed Geraldine with Cambodian citizenship, which is truly quite unique. In his reign, only four people have been granted citizenship, and Geraldine is one of those four. In 2000, Geraldine was made a member of the Order of Australia. In 2006, the Rotary Foundation uh, recognised her as a Paul Harris Fellow, recognising her contributions to humanity. Most importantly to us, Geraldine is the founder of the Sunrise Children's Villages. Let me just quickly read directly off their website. The Sunrise Children's Villages are two orphanages located in Siem Reap and Phnom Penh in Cambodia. The orphanages care for hundreds of orphaned or disadvantaged Cambodian children. Plans are in place to open a third Sunrise Children's Village in Sihanoukville. The Australian Corporation Computer Share has generously donated more than $500,000 to realise this dream for a third centre through its worldwide staff giving program, for which we are very grateful. This centre, sorry, this centre will give a home, medical care and education to more than 180 HIV affected children. Sorry. With Geraldine, uh, John and Kathy Tucker. Now, John and Kathy are even more important to us in that they are going to be responsible for this centre. I will let Geraldine tell you about their many, many achievements in this field and how they are going to run the centre for us. And John, Geraldine and Kathy will be speaking to us. The format for today is that uh, the three of them will be talking to us for about half an hour and then they'd really encourage questions. So I'd really, please do, whatever you'd like to know about this fantastic initiative, please do ask those questions. And then um, Barb and Alison have organised lunch for us and you'll hear it being put in across over there. And after that, um, uh, the folks would, again, if you want to talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, here's a great chance. I'll stop babbling and I'll hand over to Geraldine Cox. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, I thought I would share with you how computer, computer share landed in our lap. Um, I live in rural Cambodia and I'm not very familiar at all with the corporate scene at all. I'd never heard of computer share and I got an email from a man called Chris Morris who said pretty much these words, um, next time you're in Melbourne, drop in and see us and tell us what you would do if we gave you some money. And I thought, oh, they might be good for 20,000. So next time I came to Melbourne, I rang up and I came in and I sat in a boardroom somewhere close to here and there was Chris, two other people and Barb and I did my little DVD. I had two years of annual reports and some newsletters and I did my little, you know, show. And at the end of that I said, now, is there any other information you'd like to ask me that might help you be a sponsor for Sunrise? And Chris said, well, we'd like to give you half a million dollars and have a computer share orphanage built. And I said, excuse me? <laughs> and he said, 
we've already decided we want a computer share orphanage and we'll kick it off with half a million dollars. And I said, come again? <laughs> and after the third time, it really got through to me that um, they were actually going to do this. And I've never had anybody, the most I've ever had in a lump sum was $50,000 in the 16 years I've been in Cambodia. To have somebody give me half a million was like pretty overwhelming. And um, when I went outside, you know, it wasn't the sort of thing we could just say, you know, shake hands and thank you very much and we'll talk later. I got outside and I put my briefcase down and out there in the car park I went, Yahoo! <laughs> out in the car park. But that's how Computer Share started. And it's been over two and a half years that it's taken to get through all the red tape and to get to the land title, uh, papers signed, and we finally put the first spade in the ground in January. And it's just wonderful to be able to send Barbara photographs of the, of the centre actually um, going up. Um, the Tuckers, who I'm going to introduce to you when I finish talking, um, have become friends. They run the only centre of excellence for taking care of AIDS children in the country. And there's nobody else I can think of better um, to take care of the children that are going to, going to be under Sunrise's care. And when I, when I first met them, um, I was a little bit um, not suspicious of them, but I didn't know much about them and I held them at arm's length. But since I've got to know them, they live about two hours drive from my place. And um, on a couple of occasions when I've got a bit depressed about things, they're the people I jump in the car and drive two hours to be with because they have that that ability just to make you feel better. And it's wonderful to have people like that um, working so closely with me at Sunrise. Um, I want to go back now to what we're doing at Sunrise One. Um, we've introduced a rather large program of sport. Uh, there's nothing like sport to um, increase kids' self-confidence. So we've got um, tennis, um, a boxing gym, soccer, uh, uh, badminton, and volleyball, and it's wonderful to see the girls engaging with, in sport as much as um, the boys, and it really does something, you know, you, you put that um, competitiveness um, gene, get that going, and it really does bring out the kids' self-confidence. And another thing we've started to do this year, I don't know, there were, um, I don't think anybody here saw us play at the uh, concert hall in, in Sydney in 2009. But it was brought home to me on how important music is and how much that can heal the soul. So we now have um, about 12 children learning classical and jazz piano. We've got about um, eight kids, including girls, learning uh, Western drums, guitar and saxophone. So my plan is I'm always thinking of a hook, uh, another new way to raise money. So I'm hoping in a couple of years I can bring the Sunrise Jazz Band to Australia to raise, um, to raise some money. And it's just wonderful seeing kids play the piano that if they weren't at sunrise, they would have gone their whole life, never ever seen or heard a piano. And they're playing wonderful jazz and classical music. And it's all about opportunity. Uh, you put a musical instrument in front of these children and you will find hidden talents that you would you'd, you'd never believe existed. All these kids um, that are learning you know, piano and saxophone, they're third generation um, from illiterate rice farmers uh, that would never ever uh, have the kinds of opportunities that we at Sunrise can give them. Um, the government in Cambodia is starting to clean up its act a little bit and they've started for the first time to, to do an annual inspection of the 269 orphanages that there are in Cambodia. And I'm proud to say that our centre in Siem Reap came first. And this is based on um, uh, health and hygiene, um, education, um, happiness of the children, um, and the ability to re report um, timely to uh, the government. So we came first in Siem Reap and fourth um, in Phnom Penh. And it's just really good to have that kind of respect and relationship with the government when you're working as closely with them as we do. Now. Um, the kids at Sunrise, they come to us from backgrounds of being abused sexually and physically. They've been abandoned, they've been rejected, they're unloved, they've been tortured, they've been trafficked and sold into prostitution, into slavery, into begging rings. And when they come to us, often they've been arrested in uh, Thailand by the immigration police for being in the country illegally. Um, and then they get processed through the International Office of Migration. They come through the border camps and then they get rep repatriated to us. And the kids have been through so much sometimes when they get to Sunrise, 
They come through our gates and they look at me. Some of them have never seen a foreigner before and every adult in their life has harmed them. And they see me and they think, you know, why, why, why should she be any different? Um, they've never seen anyone as big as me. They certainly haven't seen anybody with bright red hair. And that's enough to make them terrified to begin with. But it's a horrible thing to look in the eyes of a four-year-old child and to see fear and distrust and suspicion. And when those kids walk through that gate, my job is to win them over, to make them feel safe and to have them know that they are loved maybe for the first time in their life. Um, and I tell these kids, the past is over now, everything's gonna be all right now. But it takes a lot of money to keep a promise like that. Um, and with the kind of help I'm getting from you wonderful staff here, you are helping me make things all right for these children that get to sunrise. Um, women bring children also to the orphanage. They might have lost their partner, you know, the man's run off with another woman or he's died. And she's illiterate. Um, she's the wife of a rice farmer. She's got four kids. She has got Buckley's chance of feeding those kids. There's no social welfare payments in Cambodia. There's no Salvation Army. There's no um, soup kitchens. There's absolutely no safety net. So if you've been abandoned and your husband and you, by your husband, you've got no income at all, your choices as a mother is to starve, to beg, to steal, or to become a prostitute. They are your only choices. And we often have women come to us and say, I'm going into town to look after myself, but I don't want my children to suffer that fate. So we take the children in. But one of the things that we're going to start doing now with the money that we are raising is when a mother like that comes to us and, and cannot support her children, we're gonna look at ways that we can provide a sustainable system for her, build her a small little wooden house, get her a job at, at the markets cooking something, we're going to spend some of our funds in doing something in the community to keep families together. We will always be taking children that um, are from domestic violence backgrounds, children that are true orphans, but there's lots of occasions where it's just poverty that prevents a mother from staying with her kids. And we want to find ways to uh, make it possible for the families to stay together. So that's our new focus at uh, Sunrise 1 and Sunrise 2. Now, it, it takes a lot to shock me, um, but just recently in, uh, in um, Phnom Penh, I was at a, at a bar waiting for my table to be ready for dinner, and there were two middle-aged guys, Rotarians from America at the bar, and they were you know, like really upset about something. And I went up to them and I said, I'm sorry, can I help? Have you been robbed or mugged? Or, you know, what can I do? And they said, we don't believe this. We've just had a Cambodian man in the street outside. This is the tourist stretch. Show them. Um, a laminated A4 sheet of paper with photographs of seriously um, disabled children, legless, blind, cerebral palsy, um, landmine victims, and they said, if you want sex with a disabled child, choose one of these and we'll arrange it for you. Now, you know, what is going on in this world that there are people out there that will pay money to have sex with a disabled child? Um, and these are the kinds of things we have to come up against um, and try and understand and do something about to change in Cambodia.